let's call it system one and system two for for argument's sake system one is our emotional reaction we always will use system one first it triggers your fight or your flight system two is slower it's always dealing with second-hand information from system one but it is where we're able to be rational uh, and it's a very it's a it's a conscious thought process the question is from thinking focus hi i'm ricky hi i'm rich and today the question is, how does thinking fast and slow affect leadership? Now, Rich, yes. you've done quite a lot of thinking about this. I'm not sure whether you've done a lot of <laughs> fast thinking or slow thinking. Um, but talk us through some of your your thoughts around this. Ricky, I don't do quite a lot of thinking about anything other than um, <laughs> other than what my favourite biscuits are. What are they? Custard really? creams? Well, no, currently... Currently, I'm on chocolate hobnobs. Oh, you've always been a hobnob, though, haven't you? But controversially, I am now very keen on a rich tea. Oh, no, they're not for dipping. Which is controversial, because lots of people think they're boring. But I challenge that. I, I don't think they are. I think that's an example of system one, or fast thinking. So to go back to your question. <laughs> <laughs> go back to your question. Um uh, thinking Fast and Slow, uh, many people might know, comes from Kahneman, the book that he wrote about Thinking Fast and Slow, often called System 1 or System 2, sometimes thought of as Red Brain and Blue Brain, or even some of the brilliant work from Steve Peters about uh, the chimp and the human brain. So let, let's call it System 1 and System 2, for, for argument's sake. So System 1 is our emotional reaction we always will use system one first it will always get to everything first because this is the system that we developed very very early on which keeps us alive it triggers your fight or your flight okay so it's it's fast but it's not always accurate it's not always right so it's designed to keep us safe yeah it's designed to keep us out of trouble it's kind of the the um, spidey sense, yeah. as I would call it. It's the bit that that triggers that I need to be aware something's not quite right. Yes, it's, it's brilliant, but it's error prone. System two is an upgrade that we got. So as a species, we got this upgrade that other species didn't get. System two is slower. It's always dealing with secondhand information from system one, but it is where we're able to be rational it's where we're able to be analytical uh, and it's a very conscious thought process. So one's much quicker, uh, is unconscious and is error prone, but is designed to keep us safe. One is much slower, much more analytical, much more reflective uh, and is much more conscious. So I suppose why am I rambling on about all that stuff? I think it's because working with organizations as we do, I started to sort of coin this phrase in my head about system one leaders and system two leaders and system one cultures and system two cultures. Let me take a punt at this then. Yeah. So so I'm I'm imagining from the thinking fast and slow kind of lead at the, at the question that we started with, yeah. that leaders or cultures that are in the system one thinking fast, you know, they work at a faster pace, they kind of play on emotion rather than necessarily validating some of those thoughts so they kind of dive into stuff have a go um and see how that plays out would that would that be fair yeah 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 so what i've observed quite often is sometimes you get these leaders that are pace setting that are very very demanding what that can often create i've noticed underneath them are people that report to them not everyone, but some that are very reactive. So it's almost as if they don't think. They're using system one to almost try and stay alive in an organizational sense. The leader has demanded something. I'm going to jump and react and do it. Um, and you see it happening. You know, I've seen it in some companies where it's happening all over like Europe in, in a certain company or certain companies. Not by everyone, but by lots of people, which means... We're reacting really quickly. We're getting onto things really quickly, but I'm doing it because it's what's been asked for or we're doing it because it's what's been demanded. What we've not done or what there's less of, I should say, is a system 
two element to it, which is where I might just, because remember, system two slower and more effortful. What I might do is just stop, reflect, look at what's being asked, think about where does it fit, think about how important is it, look at the priorities, think about is this something I need to do now, do I need to engage my team in it, or do I need to keep us on the priorities that we had before, for example, and then reaching a a conclusion and then acting. And that to me would be system two leadership in a system one world and i think quite often in a when you get a system one leader that's pushing in that way it creates this chain reaction of reaction that isn't always necessarily thought through i suppose the there's a downside if you got too much system two though isn't there if if it was you know very slow very you know a lot of analysis before a decision's made that might be really, really frustrating. And I'm not saying that's right, but I think there's a piece for lots of organizations about stopping and reflecting to avoid what might be errors by just being system one all the time. I can can certainly observe that in the clients that I work with. And I think this relentless need to deliver, deliver, deliver is great because it mobilizes... um, the troops, it gets people focused, it gets people um, moving forward. However, what it doesn't allow them is the time to pause, to reflect, to consider, because leaders, you know, in their minds, they've already processed a lot of the stuff that they want or want to do and expect others to work at that same pace. Now, you know, we're not all um, able to, you know, Mm. remember system one is more our protection system primarily Mm. whereas actually you know system two goes well hang on a minute there is no tiger in the bushes it was just wind or it was just some other elements of that yeah and i think i use this this analogy with um with one of my clients and we've been running their leadership program for over a year now and i i constantly find myself saying i want to slow you down Mm to speed you up and and the whole process here is to go let's be clear where we want to go yeah let's actually map that out and do the thinking both creative and critical rather than rushing in finding we've tried the same old stuff that we've always done or the things that we thought we hadn't thought through properly and therefore have to come back and start again anyway yes so you, you end up wasting time and duplicating effort and, and a whole load of things like that. Yeah, and, and the irony is when we do the work, so we, we do this concept of business challenges where we, we try and embed the learning through some meaningful business challenges, despite the fact I tell them that's what's going to happen and therefore watch out for it, it still happens. So when we do the reflective process, which we force on them in order to go, what have we learnt? What have we realised? Mm. What what can we take in the next um, the next stage in terms of whether it be a project or or something else? What do we take from this? The fact is that you know going too quick either leaves a trail of destruction in your wake, and people can't keep up, or you get stuck into stuff and make loads of mistakes in the process and have to come back and and circle back and do it properly anyway. So you you used a word in there that I think is really important. So you use the word reflect. So I think most of the cultures that we've worked in over the last, I don't know, 10, let's talk about last 10 years, could could go further, but in the last 10 years, certainly this has accelerated in in, in the latter part of that 10 year period, is you see in what we often talk about as being a now and next culture in an organization. So we push really, really hard now. And as soon as we've done now, we're on to next. And then we're on to now, and then we're on to next. And we're on to now, and we're on to next. What we don't necessarily do, as you've put it nicely, is slow down to speed up. So we, we stop, we reflect, we learn, we go again. There's very little reflection. And this plays right into the system one thing. So what we become is very habitual. We, we are doing very similar things over and over again. Um, we're not thinking about it too much. There's a lot of demand. 
Now, that's 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 what we observe. What's really interesting, though, is when you go and talk to very senior people, they'll often say, no, but I, I want challenge. I want people to, to stop. I want stop me and say, but what about this and what about that? But somehow they haven't managed to create a culture where people feel comfortable to say, hang on, let me just check this. Does this line up with that? What about this over here? Um, is this the right thing for us to do right now? Before we do this, we need to learn from that, those sorts of things. So we get these, you know, so that therefore the system one leaders and managers just run off with it. And there's very few people stopping and checking. And when we say stopping and checking, we don't mean that you take forever, but we mean that you do just ask the questions of where does it fit? What have we learned from last time? Is this the right use of resources? You know, those sorts of questions. So we, we have sort of less of this system two and much more of this system one. What we're advocating for, I guess, and what, what I'm advocating for is more of a balance. I think I think I think you're right. I think it does need a balance. But I think the other thing to play your system one thinking in is remember we said this is the protection system and challenging one's boss is not always considered wise if the environment's not right. Exactly, exactly. So so people go into protection mode. So they go, boss has asked for this. I don't really understand it, but we've got to do it anyway. Uh, and then, you know, we're all doing that, or lots of people are doing that. Lots of people don't quite understand it or agree with it, but we're all doing it. Because actually I'm not playing out what's, let me make sense of it, what's right for the customer, what's right for the organisation. And I understand why this happens. It's not criticism, but I'm kind of doing, how do I make sure I preserve my status in, in the group? Which again is a, is a psychological thing, isn't it? You know, how do I ensure that I'm part of the group and not left out of the group? Because if I'm left out of the group, what could happen to me then? So it's, it's understandable because that is a system one behavior, but it, so there's a challenge in here really. And I suppose the challenge is to senior leaders how can you invite reflection? How can you invite learning? And there's a challenge in there to people that report into senior leaders, which is to say, how can you have the bravery to challenge, but challenging because you are trying to push the organization towards its goals and towards its purpose so you can get there quicker. Ironically, as you said, slow down to speed up. Yeah, and and I would agree with that. I think I think the key thing here is, and I, and I remember it vividly talking to the groups that we were working with, um, saying that you will make these mistakes. The question is, will you learn from them? Um, and and they all go, but we haven't got time. We have to get stuck in. I said, hang on a minute, but you do have the time because you have to come back and do it again properly anyway. So why don't we cut that bit out? and actually focus on let's get clarity let's be clear where we want to go let's do some proper thinking about what we could do and how we might go about it before we make some clear decisions and do some proper critical evaluation of our thinking so that the decisions we make are more robust we're more confident and we actually achieve more more quickly more effectively um so I would say I wouldn't invite people to reflect. I would, I would force reflection as part of the model. It's difficult. You know, we're saying, well, we should slow down and we should reflect. Your biology will force you into this system one behavior to start with because it's what we do. We will always use system one first. So you're fighting your biology. So it's not as easy as just saying, well, we should reflect. But I think what you mentioned in there is, again an interesting point so you talked about business challenges we bring people together to reflect so forcing connection and putting people in a room or on a team's call or whatever that are going through or working on a project or trying to achieve a goal or whatever it might be you know even if you took for example a load of marketing managers and you put them together for a monthly reflection call that that connection that you cause and you create allows people to become more rational and, and analytical through the conversation that they have. So it slows down and moves you to system two. That then causes us to be able to think differently and to be able to challenge. Whereas if, if we don't bring people together to connect and they're working on their own, 
well, they're only in their own head. So they're only running a certain inner dialogue track, which might not um, be able to, to break out of itself. So connection is really important here. Where can we cause connection in groups and in teams to get them just to ask simple questions? What have we learned? What's working? What's not? That sort of stuff doesn't have to take long that causes them to slow down, to speed up. And I think that's, you know, this connection bit is essential because a number of things happen when you force them to connect. And, you know, you're more uh, polite than me. Invite was the language of choice, whereas I'm going, no, get them in a room, force them, make it happen, make, them. make it make it happen. Because, because I see the frustration that comes from leaders when they – they kind of go, why did nobody say anything? That's what they, they, they're having to challenge the boss's reality, and that comes with a level of fear and a level of risk. System one overrides it, and they go, oh, no, perhaps he's right and I'm wrong, or she's right and I'm wrong. Um, and therefore, we kind of have to you know, engineer the process so it, it does cause these natural pause and reflective moments so that we are, whilst slowing down, speeding up in reality, because we're doing it better more often. And I think, you know, this connection piece for me is really powerful because actually the more they connect, the stronger relationships and bonds emerge, which yeah. means challenge becomes easier. Yeah, and it means that um, we're more likely to win and keep winning if we connect and we talk because we share um, we share successes, we share learning, we share growth. We're likely to feel more confident. When we feel more confident through working together, we release more of the good endorphins, which allows us to feel, you know, it's, it's this concept of broaden and build. We feel more positive emotions. We're more likely to be positive. If we're more likely to do that, we're more likely to win, whatever winning means. And I think the other thing as well is if you can be brave enough as a leader to bring your team together and to ask the questions, right, what's going well, what's not going well, what can we learn and show some vulnerability in that, then actually you're going to make it, you're going to create this culture of safety where it's much easier for people to join in and do that. Now that doesn't mean that you can't bounce off of that and say, right, come on then let's make it happen and inject some pace again. But it's just, if you're running, if you're running flat out nonstop, you will eventually fall over tired. If you run pause, Get the, take the nutrition on board and all that kind of stuff as a metaphor for the, for the learning, you're likely to be able to keep going for longer and be more successful. That's really kind of a good place to start, uh, to kind of draw this to a close. <laughs> to start. You did the, <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> this is a good place to start. Well, well, the analogy going through my mind was very much around, um, this is about knowing as a leader when to push the accelerator, when to pump the brakes, and having your foot on kind of both uh, so that you know when to push and speed and when to hold it back and, you know, slow down to speed up over time. So I think that, that was the analogy I was searching for. To find out how Thinking Focus can unlock the potential within your organisation, go to www.thinkingfocus.com where you'll discover more about the work we do, helping our clients increase productivity and enable change.